Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to talk briefly about something that's been on my mind a little bit lately because I got this little guy in for review. Um, and that is the idea of a hard wallet. Now to start with, um, this is the Machine Era TI5 Slim Wallet. Um, I, I got a couple of pens from them for uh, review, and uh, by the way, you know, full disclosure and whatnot, this was given to me by the maker. But, um, and they threw this into the box. I wouldn't have asked for it otherwise because uh, I, I have some opinions on hard wallets. And actually, carrying this guy, attempting to review it, um, just brought those to the forefront again. Um, but I don't mean to beat up on this wallet specifically. This is just the one that I have on my desk. But the thing is, there are lots of hard wallets out there in the night or on the EDC world. I mean, one of the things I'm least comfortable with in the EDC world is that it's kind of become a center for marketing. Like, people have realized that, you know what, we can take a new product and as long as we sell it to the EDCers, they're going to buy it. Um, and so uh, th there are many of these kinds of things out there. And, uh, you know, this one happens to be made out of a chunk of titanium here. Um, but you can also find them made out of Kydex, a special kind of polymer that bends and takes bends really well, or plastic or molded metals. Um, like this guy, and you can even find like sandwich style ones that are like two pieces of metal and then they've got like O-rings or rubber bands or something holding them together. Um, there are many of these kinds of hard wallets, but to my mind, unfortunately, although they've got a lot of style, there are some gorgeous hard wallets out there. Like EOS Cases makes these, they, they, they're a well-known maker of these, and they, they, they like these beautiful honeycomb patterns, these elaborate engravings. They're absolutely gorgeous a, as technical objects, but in my estimation, they've got some serious disadvantages for, you know, actually being a wallet. Of course, this is personal. It's a review channel. Every damn thing is personal opinion. Don't go get on me for objectivity here. And let me know in the comments if you disagree. If you love your hard wallet, let me know why. But to me, personally, they drive me nuts, and I want to talk about why. I mean, to start with, they are very often pricey. That is the, the, the absurdity of an expensive wallet. You, you spend a bunch of money clearing out your wallet to buy something that you can no longer fill. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I digress, but this guy right here is 60 bucks, which is a fair amount of money. And like the, the fancy EOS ones I was talking about, are, you know, $150, $200, $300 dollars in a freaking heartbeat. That's a lot of money to spend on a wallet. And if you wanted to just buy like a good old-fashioned leather wallet like I carry most of the time, you could do so much less expensively. In fact, you can get a really good leather wallet for the price of one so-so um, metal wallet. I'm not called... Eh, I guess this is probably so-so. Um, and this guy is, you know, 20 bucks. I mean, that's a really cheap approach to walleting and the anti-gear, anti-wallet, by the way. But yeah, so they're pricey. Um, they are often also a little bit heavy, although some of them, like this guy, is made out of titanium, relatively thin, turns out to be a little bit lighter than the leather versions themselves. The capacity on them is often very limited. You know, on this guy, there are actually too many cards in this guy for its uh, its own good. And so you have it, it's now the case that cards can slide off the top as well as... Um, out the other side there the way you want them to be coming. And so you kind of have a certain number of cards before it stops making sense. And on the other side, you will often have limits on the lower end, where uh, you know, if you only have one or two cards, it won't capture as well. This one is actually pretty well made in that it's got this elastic, and the elastic has cutouts that allow it to hold on to even one card pretty securely. But very often, they don't work as well on the, on the low or high number of cards. You know, with this guy, it doesn't matter how many cards I've got in here. I can have just one card, I can have ten cards, and it's going to work just fine. Whereas these guys tend to have some compromises when you've got relatively fewer cards. Um, they are also uh, often relying on some kind of an elastic. In this case, it is very explicitly an elastic band that goes around the center of it there. And in fact, they include an extra one, which is nice. But the problem is elastic is not a material that I tend to trust in the long term. Because you get not only wear on it as you're constantly sliding cards in and out of your wallet, um, but you also get uh, possible breakage and frankly age. Uh, elastic doesn't tend to age well. I mean, as anybody with old underwear will tell you, elastic goes. And so sooner or later, this elastic is going to fail and this fancy metal chunk is going to become completely useless. And when it becomes, uh, when it does fail, you're going to actually start losing cards. Cards are going to start falling out as opposed to when a, a leather wallet falls apart. And this one's far from it, but you'll start seeing, you know, holes in stitching and whatnot. But it's a long time before you start losing cards out of it. So the, the, the elastic thing is a little bit frustrating. Some of them even use like rubber O-rings, where they'll have like six O-rings bent around the sides there, and they come with a bunch of spare O-rings. But the thing is, honestly, O-ring replacement sucks. 
This is something I have to deal with already in my life. Why would I bring this into my wallet? I, I don't get it. And so having that kind of reliance on, you know, disposable materials, for lack of a better term, is a pretty ugly thing, especially when you're trying to get into something metal, supposed to be super durable. Um, another thing to com uh, contemplate is that a lot of these end up having sharp edges. Sometimes that's just due to machining issues, like they didn't chamfer things well enough. But other times, for instance, if this guy, if you're not running it at sufficient capacity, you've got these big metal fins sticking up here. They're well-rounded, they're well-chamfered, it's not the end of any worlds, but absolutely 100%, this is going to press into you as you are uh, carrying this guy. If you are not at the perfect capacity, uh, this guy is going to be stabbing you on a regular basis. And the very last thing I want to be is stabbed on a regular basis. It's not going to kill you, but it's not something that's going to be super uh, enjoyable, frankly. And, and, you know, a lot of these suffer from those same issues. I don't need another thing stabbing me. Um, and uh, speaking of which, um, they are another hard metal object in my life. Look, uh, everyday carry, uh, loading out your pockets, particularly if you're a man, you got lots of pockets, you don't have purses and whatnot to, uh, or mercies for that matter, to rely on. Um, um, then you kind of have to think about where you're putting everything in your pockets. For me personally, what I tend to do is I will have my phone in my pocket. I, I would pull my phone out, but it's what's filming this right now. So I have my phone in my pocket in my right side there. I'll put my wallet on top of my phone because it's a nice soft object and, you know, will uh, provide some padding from the outside world. And then next to those things, I'll have my pocket knife hanging down in there. Um, this is part of the reason I'm concerned about pocket packing on a regular basis. Some people disagree with this loadout, but it works well for me. But the problem Problem is, if you've got your, that kind of relies on the idea that you've got a soft, or a one hard object, your phone, and then you put a soft object on top of it. If you're putting two hard objects in your pocket, well, they're going to be fighting each other. Uh, you know, it's going to be attacking your knife. The metal of the, the wallet's going to be attacking the metal of your knife the metal of your phone, whatever, how you want to load out, it's going to be going on there, and your keys might be going after your wallet. No matter what, you're going to have a battle in your pocket. There will be a battle freaking royale. And the thing is, that's always the case, but if it's a soft leather wallet, I can hit this with, uh, you know, we know who's going to win here, and it's the more expensive item. So, to me at least, at least I sure hope that any wallet, if your knife can be damaged by a wallet, you got a bad knife or a heck of a wallet. Um. So anyways, the, the, the fact that you've got yet another hard object in there to scratch things, to knock against things, or frankly, just to be audibly loud. I mean, this is a thing, absolutely 100%, as opposed to, see, there you're mostly hearing the frogs. Sorry about the frogs, they're loud as heck out there, and it's too hot to have the windows shut. Um, But anyways, it's just another hot object. And then finally, uh, for me at least, a lot of these rely on sort of all the cards being together like this guy. And that makes accessibility a bit of a problem. Here you get two very easy to access cards. You get the one on the top, and in this case you get a little window here for the one on the bottom. So that gives you two cards that you can very easily pull out. And very often that's all you need. And that's often all you get from wallets. But the thing is, if you have an actual wallet with actual pockets, you get a lot more. You can very easily grab this card or this card, and you can very easily grab the one that's underneath that one by just kind of pulling in here. Just go in the back and grab it. Oh, there you go. That was easy. Or you can go in and grab this one in the back here very easily. You get multiple pockets, which allow you to do more organization. At least for me, I tend to have ID-related cards over here. I tend to have money-related cards over here. That way, I always know where I need to go. I know where things are in case freaking closed. That just makes things a lot easier. Whereas with this guy, you kind of have all of your cards in the center of things and just kind of hanging out, chillaxing, mingling together. And so if you want to pull out any card, you have to pull out all your cards and show whoever you're looking at every damn thing in your wallet. And that may not be something you're super desiring. But the biggest issue, a lot of you may be sitting there like, Nick, you're nitpicking again. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Hey, you can put your, you know, put the wallet in the back pocket. You're done. But the problem with this is the biggest issue that I have with any of these hard wallets is that you're not winning anything. I mean, fundamentally, there appears to be no advantage to going to a hard wallet. I mean, maybe with some of like the Kydex clamshell taco sorts of approaches, you can put like a key into your wallet, which you might not otherwise be able to, although some of them do actually allow that to happen there. And I guess you can always pinch it in the middle there. But that's that's something that really frustrates me a little bit, is that there's just no advantage whatsoever that I can find to these guys. Um, 
maybe I'm missing something, but, you know, at the very, very, just compared to even a key holder, this guy doesn't even have a cash pocket. By the way, how are you putting cash in there? You fold up the bills, put it in the middle? It's not super graceful, and then it rattles around. You know, hey, there, there, there are no advantages relative to a good old-fashioned freaking leather wallet that I found. If I'm missing something, again, let me know in the comments. Maybe you're going to love that. But the thing is, you know, those are the things that drive me a little bit nuts, is that you don't seem to be winning anything. You got another hot object in your pocket, both audibly and attacking other things in your pocket. The accessibility to cards can be tricky. You've often got sharp edges around there. They're often using some kind of an elastic or a rubber. Um, the, the, the capacity is limited. They're often heavy, and they're often pretty pricey. So ultimately, I gotta be honest, hard wallets just seem like a bad idea to me in general. At very, very best, being super generous, they might be as good as a conventional wallet at, you know, being a wallet. I mean, and maybe, maybe we're, we're willing to say, okay, Nick, this is not about function. This is about man jewelry. This is about having another piece of titanium to color coordinate with everything else. About having a beautiful, you know, maybe we carry metal wallets for the same reason that we wear fancy watches or carry a fancy knife. Maybe that's what's going on here. Maybe that's entirely the point. It's just more man jewelry. But the thing is, I, I don't know. To me, uh, trying to carry this guy for review or just in general, every time I look at it, it just looks like an EDC albatross. It's something that you really just don't need in your life that's going to be scratching, pinching, and jabbing their way through your day with absolutely no conceivable benefits. I just deeply don't get it. So I, I will not be reviewing any of the odd wallets out there in the world. Um, this guy will go up for charitable donation, and uh, th th that's, that's really about it. So uh, there you go. Let me know your opinions in the bottom there, but odd wallets... Just ain't doing it for me. Hope this has been interesting to you, though, uh, that I haven't given you too hard of a time. Uh, uh, that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.